Hey y'all, it's Rhonda from Georgia Antique, and I just wanted to show you a little paper bag pocket that I had made for one of my journals. I thought I would get on here and show you how to make one. This one was for a nautical journal, and all it is is a Walgreens bag from the pharmacy, and I stamped the image I wanted on the front, wrapped it with linen, and as I wrapped it, I let the edges fold over so you could see the frayed edge. And then I just pinched a piece of strip of fabric that I had left over from something, and I glued on a piece of lace so that it wraps around the front and ties, just like that. And inside this one, I just put a small little coffee dyed paper notepad, but you could actually use it for lots of things. Any kind of little goodies or put it in your journal, um, like I did with this one. So there's lots of uses for them. But I wanted to show you a few more I made. So these two I made for Christmas with sample stamps. And I just thought they turned out cute too. Kind of a, a country rustic look about them. And so there's what I did with that one. I glued these little snowflakes on on top of the stamp snowflakes and it says with love at Christmas so there's that one and then this one was with another stamp of hers that's the little stocking and I just did a little twine bow with a little jingle bell so there's that and then this one I did a little bit fancy very elegant looking. This is more of sample stamps. And I just did it a little bit different to where it ties in the back. So as you open it, it has the big dolly on it. And then when you open it, there's the pocket. I had to use um, the dolly on it because this bag was actually ripped here and here. So I just kind of covered that up with the dolly so it wouldn't be seen. And so with the pretty on the front, I thought I could just make it tie to the back on this one. So there's that. So I thought maybe I would just make one or two while I was on here. So... Here we are with our Walgreens bags. And you can use any kind of pharmacy bag, any kind of bag in general that you want to use. I like to coffee down mine because they are kind of thin and kind of fragile. And to me with the coffee dyed, they just seem to get a little bit stiffer and a little more sturdy. So that's why I coffee dyed these. So let's start on decorating one. Okay, so with this one, I already have a little bit of material cut out and I have a stamp ready. This is another sample stamp. So I'm just gonna ink it up. And it's the butterfly stamp from her, I can't remember the name of this set, but it's got more of a bot bot botanical feel, if that's how you say that. So I'm just gonna kinda center it. I'm gonna stamp it to where I have room to glue the material, the fabric around the edges. So I want the stamp to be in this area. And also you have to take into account how it folds down. So with that in mind, I'm going to do it right about there. Just push it down good. 
so there we go. It's kind of faint, but I think it'll be fine. Okay, so I thought I would use this green fabric that I had just ripped. And it's wrinkled, but that's okay. As we glue it, it will get the wrinkles out. So I'm just gonna take and and what I did is I just laid out my fabric and then I laid the bag on top. And you kind of want this part even at the top with the fabric, just maybe barely sticking up. And so then as I cut around it, you have just a little bit extra all the way around to fold over. And you can do as, as little or as much as you want to fold over, but on this piece, this is how I cut it. So I kind of started the cut and then I ripped it um, to have the frayed edge. So I'm going to start putting that on. I'm just going to take some Fabri-Tac. Or actually, this is tacky glue. So I'm just going to get good all the way around the edges. Just cover it best you can. Not too thick because you don't want it lumpy under there. Just enough to hold it. I like to put a little bit of glue all over just so we don't have any any spots trying to bubble up. But I just do it kind of rushed, kind of just here and there. Okay. So then I'll take my bag and take my fabric. I'm just going to line it up. And if you wanted to iron your fabric, that would be perfectly fine. I just tend to let the glue do the work for me. And as you smooth it out, you can get the wrinkles out. And then I want to turn it over and make sure you're even, at least fairly even on the sides and have enough to fold over and fold up on this end. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue this. And you don't have to have it like all completely glued down just enough to hold it to where it folds over and holds it so you can have that little frayed frayed edge popping up if you want it to okay so i do the sides first and i'm just going to fold it over and let it catch the glue Same with this side. Got extra strings. There we go. Okay, so we're just gonna keep pushing that down smooth it out and then we're going to turn around and do the bottom and I just kind of take my fingers and push it in a little bit in the corners and then fold it up got my glue a little too high but that's okay and then on those corners I just take and come back with the glue make sure they're adhered And so if you don't like the frayed edge look, you could definitely clean it up and make it look 
straight or finished, but I kind of like it frayed like this. Okay, there's one more. So there's that. And then I'm going to fold this down. And you can kind of, a lot of times it's already folded for you from the medicine being in it. But you can, you can change the fold if it's too high or too low, depending on your ribbon too, because you're going to need enough to let your ribbon fit there good. So now I'm just going to take and let's see where I want my ribbon. And I'm just going to start gluing it down. And do it like this if you don't want a chance getting glue on anything else. So then you're just going to glue that down. And then trim off the excess. So there's that. Straighten it if it needs any adjusting. Okay. And then I have this little sorry silk ribbon. So what I do with it is I just take and kind of eyeball it on the back and then make sure it's kind of centered on the front between on, in the middle of the ribbon. And so then I'll flip it back over and come back and glue. And that way, when you flip it back over, you can tie it like that. And I didn't get this one exactly straight, so I'm going to pull it a little bit and adjust it. I didn't get it even to where I could tie a bow. And I should, probably should have made it a little bit longer, but I think that's perfect. So there's that. And that's all there is to that. I think that one turned out cute. Okay. And you could always add extra, like, you know, ribbon or whatever down here if you wanted it to have a little extra something. In fact, the next one, that's what I'm going to do with it. Okay, so let me get my stamp ready. This is another sample one. I got out her stamps today and I thought, oh man, I need to use those. You order stuff and kind of get busy on other stuff and forget what you have. But I just love these. She has so many pretty stamps and dies. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and keep in mind the fabric, the fold. And if it goes up under the fold, that's okay. But just keep that in mind whenever you're stamping. I'm going to move this out a little bit so I can have a flat surface. I think that was why my other one wasn't as clear. Um, so, just going to kind of eyeball it there. good and there we go okay so then I'm gonna take and I have some fabric already cut with this one too 
So I thought I'd just use this um, drop cloth material. Oops. And I'll go ahead and glue this one up. I had to stay up late to not to do this video until everybody went to sleep so it'd be quiet. I like to stay up late and craft though. The phone doesn't ring. Don't have to cook for anybody. Everything's tended to. Just kind of a peaceful time. So then I'm going to take my fabric I'm going to put it to the top right here Make sure it's even At least somewhat even for you to fold up Smooth it out really good the sides. I hope I'm not getting in the way for y'all to see. And if you have too much on the side, you can always trim it. So there's that. And then we're going to do the sides first. I love to use drop cloth. I just love how natural and I don't know, I just like it. It's a good easy fabric to work with. And then down here, I just kind of push these in a little bit. And you could, you could actually cut them if you didn't want them on there, the thickness of it. But I just leave it because it's simpler that way, just to fold it up and just glue the corners. At least for me, it's simpler. So just do it like that. I'm gonna add some glue. Hold that corner down. I think these are really cute to accent your journals or, um, do you know, they'd be such cute little gift bags or, I don't know, you could think of a lot of things to use them for. And we're recycling old pharmacy bags, so I just love to reuse stuff that would normally be thrown in the garbage. So there is what that looks like. So the trim that I picked out for this one is this cute little pom-pom trim. And I just thought that would be really sweet right there. I don't know what this, I think this came off a lampshade actually. It still has some of the paper on it. I think I ripped it off of an old lampshade. So I'm just going to take and trim it where I want it. At least on one side. And I'm going to use my fabric tuck for this because it's a little heavier um, trim. And I'm afraid it might fall off if I don't. So. I'm going to add that right there. Trim this side off. that just a tad. Make 
make sure it catches good. Okay, so that's what we have so far. So up here, since we have the three different colors down here, I thought I would do a layer effect at the top. So I'm gonna do this one first. Go ahead and use my Fabri-Tac. So I'm gonna add this one. Got fuzzy on my band-aid. Add that one right there. And then I thought I would add this color. There's that fuzzy again. Then I would add this one on top of that. This one looks like it stretches a little bit. Okay, so let me go ahead and do that. I have to get some more glue. Okay. I'm going to add that one there. It's looking cute. And then I'm going to take and trim these. Be careful not to cut the bag though. Okay, so that's what we have so far. And then I got this seam binding ribbon that's kind of a peachy color. So it goes right along with that color. So this is what I'm going to use for the tie. So I'm going to take and lay it underneath. See if I can measure better on this one than I did the last one. I think that'll work. So I'm just going to take in the middle. I'm going to cut it right along there. And just kind of put it on the back to get a good idea of getting even. It's pretty close. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to glue it on here. And this one, I think I'm going to let it kind of pinch together as I go. Just a little bit. Add a little dimension. Kind of does it for me anyway with this wrinkled seam bound in. So, that looks cute. I'm going to turn it over. I'm not so sure if that's straight. Okay. And then, see if I can get it tied right. I almost got that one too short. this stuff is hard to tie because it gets kind of like a chalky feel to it so but I still love to use it I think it looks so pretty and there we have that one so I thought that was really cute 
Okay, so that's what I wanted to show you. And I'll probably be making some more of these for Christmas. But I just thought they turned out really cute. And you can be as plain and simple and kind of that country look you want, as you want to be. Which is really cute too. And this one I forgot to tell you. I actually gessoed the bag um, before I stamped it so that it would look more like the snow. So that's why that one has a little bit more of a white tint to it because I gessoed it first. And you could totally do that with all of them and it might even look, look better. Might make it stand out better. Probably would based on that one. But I kind of like the coffee paper showing through. So you can be as plain and simple with them as you want. And this one was pretty plain for that journal. But, and then you can get a little bit fancy with it too. So just have fun with it. And I haven't used my stamps in so long. I've been starting to use them a little bit more. So I thought it would be fun to pull out some of the stamps I've never really used before. I just thought it'd be neat to, to try them out on these bags. And I thought they turned out really cute. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you um, will go create some. And it doesn't have to be the same kind of paper bag. It can be a regular lunch bag. And just be creative with it. And just let your imagination run wild. And use up all those little scraps and lace pieces and little fabric scraps. And, and just, just enjoy creating. I will see you soon in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. God bless.